Getting inside the head of an auditor as they audit a code base live and go through and just say exactly what they're thinking on their first pass is without a doubt the number one way to level up your game as a Web3 security researcher and get better at auditing smart contracts yourself. For that reason, I've done several, several videos on this channel in the past where I go through and live audit a smart contract and just think out loud and say everything that I'm thinking along the way. But today we are embarking on a new live auditing adventure with a twist. In this series, I tackled a much more complex code base created by Protocol Labs, the team behind Filecoin. This code base is designed to implement a new model for blockchain scalability called hierarchical consensus. And of course it's implemented in Solidity. And to do this live audit, I paired up with Dennis, who is a research engineer at Protocol Labs and a cybersecurity veteran with nearly two decades of experience. So throughout the series, Dennis explains to me how the system works and I walk him through my auditing process and we uncover a number of bugs and vulnerabilities along the way. Now, I'm going to be releasing a new episode in this series every single week, and it's going to be structured such that you can follow along and literally have the same exact context that I have as we're going through and auditing this code base. So with the first episode today, we're going to get a high level overview of the system from Dennis. And this is the same overview that I got when I was first getting into this code base so that you guys can have exactly the same information that I have as we're going through this together. All right, but before we dive into things, of course, my name is Owen and over a year and a half ago, I founded Guardian Audits. And ever since then, we've uncovered dozens upon dozens of critical and high vulnerabilities. And personally, I've spent easily over a thousand hours auditing smart contracts along the way. And my goal with all of these videos that I create, and especially this series, is to distill down everything that I've learned along the way and deliver it to you so that you can ultimately become a much, much better security auditor or blockchain engineer in as little time as possible by just learning from all of my experiences thus far. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this first episode of our Filecoin auditing series. All right, just like I said, we're going to be starting things off in this first episode with a high level explainer of the IPC actors code base from Dennis. Now the IPC actors describes a set of actors and corresponding smart contracts that orchestrate hierarchical consensus. Now, the easiest way to think about this is if you say have one root network here and we could say this is Ethereum here, then we can have a child network here which intermittently commits and checkpoints the state of this child network to the parent network. And so essentially you can think of these root and child networks like an L2 setup, right? So similar to how Arbitrum and Optimism are to Ethereum. But of course, that's just the high level explanation of the system. To get a deeper understanding, I will now pass it off to Dennis. This video, I'm gonna to introduce interplanetary consensus protocol. At present, consensus poses a major scalability bottleneck on blockchain networks. This is particularly the case when all validators are required to process all transactions. Even more, not every application benefits from using the same consensus protocol. For example, different applications may have different performance or security or scalability requirements, making it difficult for a single blockchain network with a single consensus protocol to accommodate any type of Web3 application. And uh, in this work, we are considering hierarchical structure, hierarchical consensus to reach that scalability goal. So from our point of view, to improve scalability, we need the following hierarchical network structure, modern scalable consensus implementations in our case. So the main goal is a on-demand horizontal scalability of Filecoin using sidechain scheme that can run arbitrary consensus protocols that feed the security requirement for that subnet. Uh, and I should also note that this is a work in progress and uh, we only have testnet 
where you can uh, run a subnet with a consensus protocol and use all benefits of the hierarchical structure to secure your network. Uh, to introduce the technology, I will use the following terms. So, uh, subnet is just a sidechain, parent subnet, the subnet from which that new subnet was instantiated here, or node of a subnet, it's a full node, learner, full node that doesn't mind blocks, user and client are the same terms, IPC agent or just agent is a daemon that interacts with the IPC network on behalf of the set of accounts in those networks. Native token, the native token of a root network that is to interact with a hierarchical consensus. Circulating supply of a subnet, native tokens that were injected for their use in subnet. Cross-net messages, transactions between different arbitrarily subnets. Collateral or stake amount of native tokens for a subnet to register the subnet in the hierarchy of the IPC. So the main idea of IPC is to create a framework that allows you to deploy subnets with different consensus protocols. You can choose a consensus protocol, whatever you want, and uh, you just can register your subnet and start produce blocks in your subnet. Of course, each subnet keeps its own state and all subnets can validate transactions in parallel. Uh, subnets are firewall from parent subnets to secure parent subnets from child subnets in case those subnets are compromised. And that's possible because a because users of the subnets can run consensus, any consensus protocol, even insecure consensus protocol. And of course, uh, child subnets must not degrade the security of the entire hierarchical consensus system or the parent subnet. So, we can see that, for example, we have a, a root, we have a root, the main network, and we can create two hierarchical subnets, T01 and T0. Then, within a subnet root slash T01, users, for any unknown for, for us reason, can create a new subnet root slash T01 slash T02, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, let's look at the IPC system from architectural perspective. So let's imagine that in the root net there are four nodes that, that uh, run, for example, expected consensus protocol. And uh, we have a requirement, security requirement, that child subnet nodes must also run full nodes, actually learners of the parent subnet. So in our case, if we create a subnet called root Alice, and uh, there are two validators that run this network, then these two nodes must run learner node for a rootnet and full node for the subnet. And the same for the second subnet root slash bob. If we're gonna to create a new subnet in a root slash bob subnet called root slash bob slash nl, then and, uh, we have also two nodes that run new consensus protocol, then we in this subnet we will have two nodes that run learner node for root net, a learner node for root slash bob subnet, for parent subnet, and full two full nodes for the endpoint subnet. Another view on the system architecture is a from can be done from a actor's perspective or smart Contracts. In our case, we have two contracts. The gateway smart contract, that is the same for each subnet, and that is used in each subnet to implement the hierarchical logic and enforce security policy. So the gateway actor is the same for all subnets, and it cannot be changed by the users of subnet. At the same time, new subnets are spawned by deploying a new smart contract that implements the subnet actor interface, but that implementation is performed by the users of that subnet. So we don't 
control these implementations. So potentially there can be, they can have vulnerabilities introduced by the users of the sub, the creators of the sub. So if we have the uh, parent network, root network, there is a gateway actor here and for each subnet in the parent network, there is a subnet actor that implements a special interface to register subnet to be able to join that subnet, leave it or kill. That's the main idea of that interface. And another, the third view of the system is from a user perspective. So to interact and to run the hierarchical consensus infrastructure, we use IPC agents. Uh, that can be considered as a client of the hierarchical consensus. So IPC agent performs different actions, can perform different actions in both networks, in a parent and a child, on behalf of the users of these networks. That means that IPC agent has access to count private key of the user of a parent network and a child network. Uh, one of the most important requirements from a security perspective is a firewall property that says that the impact of a child subnet that can be compromised is limited to at most the circulation supply of the token in this network. So it's not possible to withdraw more native tokens that were uh, used to fund that subnet. And this firewall property is enforced by gateway actors in the, in the parent in the parent subnet. So when we send cross network messages between different subnets or send checkpoint messages or fund or release tokens, gateway actors implement that. So here we can see the interface of the gateway actor and these are the main functions. So register, at stake, release, kill, commit child checkpoint, fund, release, send cross message and submit top down checkpoint so actually there are these methods can be divided into two groups the first group is related to subnet management like register at stake release stake queue and and the second one is related to cross network messaging how to fund the account your own account in the subnet how to get the tokens your tokens back and how to send crossnet messages using from a smart contract or from your account. And uh, these are uh, methods from a subnet actor interface. So here the main goal of the actor is to be able to instantiate the subnet and provide functions to validators that are going to participate in that subnet. So uh, let, let's say that a user wants to create a new subnet. So to do that, she or, he or she needs to deploy a subnet actor in the parent, in the parent network that implements the subnet interface. And let, so the implementation of that subnet actor is up to the community of that subnet or to the users of that subnet. And let's say they want to, they, so they can define their own security policy for that subnet and implement that subnet subnet actor uh, that enforce that enforces that security policy. So let's say that uh, they wanted to have at least four validators in the subnet, and each validator has to has to stake one token, one native token, to participate in that in that subnet. Uh, then we a user runs a validator runs a validator ipc agent and a full node of the parent so he needs to run three pieces of software full node of the parent ipc agent and full and uh, full node of a subnet as a validator software that implements consensus the target consensus protocol after that he or she can call join method to join the subnet, add collateral to the subnet, and start mining or validating the blocks. One of the main, I would say, core protocol of the IPC consensus is a checkpoint protocol. That's the most important security mechanism, security mechanism and transport mechanism 
to implement CrossNet messaging system. So why this protocol is important? Because it provides security guarantees using the parent parent network that is by design is more secure than the child subnet. And each subnet uses checkpoint protocol to propagate their the checkpoint, the state, the hash of the state or any other notion of the checkpoint in that subnet to the root parent. So for example it's uh, one of the popular mechanisms as a protection against long range attacks. So how it works? This is a high level description. So IPC agent monitors. So let's say we want to run checkpoint protocol in the subnet, subnet C and the root network is a subnet is a subnet P. So IPC agent monitors subnet C for checkpoint epochs. And uh, if epoch is for checkpoint, let's say every pips epoch is a checkpoint according to the subnet policy. So if this epoch is a checkpoint epoch, then IPC agent checks if the corresponding validator in the subnet C is a validator at epoch E. If it's true, then IPC agent builds checkpoint data, submits the checkpoint to the subnet actor of C in the parent P, calling the submit checkpoint method in the submit actor. Uh, if this checkpoint message gets more than the threshold number of votes, then it will be committed by the gateway actor calling commit child check method. Uh, and then gateway actor will implement the following. It will check that checkpoint is valid, it will create a child checkpoint, update circulation supply for that subnet, applies all messages and distributes rewards among source validators. So this is, as I said, very brief introduction to the IPC, but I hope that uh, you have this introduction, you will be able to understand the auditing process and the mechanics of the gateway and the submit actors that we're going to audit. Thank you. That is it for all of the context and the introduction to the system. I cannot wait to dive in and start auditing this with you guys in the next episode. And of course, if you are part of a team building a really cool DeFi application, then I want to hear about your project. If you're coming up on launch and you're starting to think about security reviews, then go ahead and head on over to guardianaudits.com slash quote and get a free set of initial security notes from a first pass of all glaring issues, glaring vulnerabilities or bugs or integration mishaps that ought to be fixed before going into an audit. And of course, if you happen to know a team who is looking to get a smart contract security audit, then send them over to guardianaudits.com slash quote. And of course, last but certainly not least, if you're interested in taking your security game in the landscape of Web3 to the next level, and you would like to join a community of like-minded auditors and blockchain engineers who are all interested in security and even potentially join others across the world and compete in team audits of real protocols and even get rewarded for the findings that you get and head on over to lab.guardianaudits.com and submit an application to join us. Okay, that's it for this time. I cannot wait to see you in the next one.